In this video, I'm going to show you how I built this report, which ranks the top industries and top companies based on the parental leave that they provide. We're going to talk about the thought process of how to build this report from beginning to end. We're also going to look at some of the niche features that I implemented in this report and how I implemented it to make it seamlessly work within this Power BI report. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So as part of a community challenge organized by Maven Analytics, I created this report that sort of creates some insights and analysis regarding to parental leaves. It creates a ranking of all the different industries and companies that do provide them. And it also looks at these different leaves and how they compare against industry average or global average. This is the second challenge that I've entered. The first one being the Amazon reviews uh, report by Data DNA. If you want to know how that works and how I built it, I also created a video on it. So check it out if you haven't yet. So first, let's have a look at the report and what it's capable of. So this is the report here, which it has a few different sections that I built. So the first one that we'll look at is the top left, which are the summaries of the, the data set and some of the key insights that I wanted to highlight. So you can see things like how many industries there are, how many companies are within those industries, as well as some different summaries here, which if you look at it by itself already gives you some summary, but it gives you some sort of supporting information like, you know, understanding how far the maternity or paid maternity is against the global average. And uh, as you can see in here as well, so I've added some sort of page tooltips to add some supporting analysis on these statements. On the bottom left, you'll see that I created a sort of a podium style ranking to rank the best companies that provide the best combination of the different leaves that is available. So at the moment we have four different categories, so paid maternity and then paid paternity and then the unpaid counterparts of them. Now I created a sort of weighted ranking to put them together and this is how we came up with uh, with this uh, with these top 3 or I guess top 4 companies. So each company you will see if you hover over their uh, their names it will give you some again page tooltip to give some information about what the parental weeks of leave that they provide and if you wanted to learn more about how the these rankings are weighted it's here at the bottom but essentially it's weighted to favor the paid leaves as opposed to the unpaid leaves and this is how we kind of calculate it at the back. In the middle here, I've created or I've used uh, something called a dynamic radial chart, which shows the different industries that we have. Just showing the top 10 industries, um, it shows you the how many weeks they provide based on what is selected here at the moment is showing paid maternity and how that compares against the global average. Now, as you make a selection here, the selection or, or the, the visual also updates based on that. So now we're looking at paid paternity leaves and um, everything else along with the summaries are also dynamic. So the summaries here at the bottom also changes as well as the subtitles. And even here, if you hover over it, you'll see that you have, um, we're hovering at the philanthropy industry, which gives you some summary about that industry how many companies there are in there, how many paid paternity weeks, which is also dynamic based on what you're selected and how that compares against the global average. You will see that if it's below global average, you'll see that it, it turns to red, which is also something that we've created dynamically. On the right here, we're simply just focusing on the different companies that provide paid leaves by either maternity or paternity. Uh, you're able to select different industries. It creates a ranking of all those companies to find the, the sort of the best companies companies that you would want to look out for if you are within that industry. So it gives you some information like how many companies there are within that industry out of the top companies, how far those uh, leaves are compared to the global average or the industry average. And it also compares what the industry averages if it's above or below the global average. Again, and, and here as well, we also provide some tooltip. So the ability to see what paid or unpaid uh, leaves they provide to their employees. So this is some additional information in case you wanted to know more. So that's pretty much the report. It's a one page report, which sounds and looks pretty simple 
simple, but it had a lot of thought behind the actual development of it. So let's go through the actual thought process and how I built this from beginning to end. So the first thing that I want to look at is the actual challenge itself. So as I mentioned, it's organized by Maven Analytics and they provide a lot of information about the data set itself right here and also things like how to enter the challenge. But the key important part here is the scenario here that they've created for us. So here it says that we'll be working as a data visualization specialist at an online business journal. Your role is to create charts and visuals that are essentially a means to create an impactful visual for the data that you've collected. So looking at this short brief, you can kind of deduce that your main audience for your report is the online uh, journal instead of the typical sort of mass population, right? And um, the key thing that is highlighted here is to create an impactful visual. Now, I don't know if it's a typo, uh, maybe it meant impactful visuals. So because otherwise it would just be a one chart or one image. But anyway, how I read this is that it means that our audience must be the online journal and as online journal and articles are, they would typically want to use infographics to kind of catch the user's eye when they are reading articles. So it means that the report is not going to be focused on exploring the data, but creating statements, summaries, and infographics that the online journal can use for their articles. And this is what I kind of thought the focus of the report should be. And it's a simple process to think about it if you just are creating a kind of static infographic. But because I'm using Power BI, I also wanted to be able to uh, change some elements, so sort of dynamic interaction, so that we can showcase what Power BI can do. But also in case that the journal wants to have a different slice of the data, they are able to do that while not losing the sort of infographic style of the page. Now that I know who the audience is and what is the main purpose of this report, I had a look at the data and I started to kind of clean it up. So there is only just one table here that they uh, gave us, which is the list of the companies. And um, what I've done is I've created this kind of model. So the model is essentially, so the, the company is the table that they've created us for us. But what I've done is I've broken that down even further. So I've created a leaves table, which is a breakdown of all those different leaves. So paid paternity, paid maternity, so that we're able to kind of slice and dice the average weeks based on user selection. So essentially just unpivoting it. I've also created a separate industry table, which just lists out all the unique industries that we have in the data sets because I wanted to create some abbreviations in case I wanted to visualize them in kind of scatter plot, for example, but it didn't happen in the end, but um, that's what I've done. Once I've set up the sort of data model of what I wanted, I created my different measures to calculate the you know different parts of, of the report itself. So I created um, some calculations, sort of calculating, the, you know, average weeks or getting the, you know, the, the global average or the industry average and I created sort of measure tables to organize them. So you will have the calculations within this calculations measure table and anything else that I use in the visual, like for example, the summaries, the dynamic summaries or dynamic colorings. I put them in this visuals measure table so that they're not kind of mixed up altogether. Once I finished exploring what the data has and the kind of insights that I wanted to show in this report, it was then time to start designing the dashboard. Now I took a lot of inspirations from, you know, various infographics that I found online. And uh, actually I created some draft here, which I will show you in a second. But I here is my first ideas of what I wanted to, to show in the report itself. And then what I did is I took some inspirations from various uh, reports. Uh, the sort of the podium style ranking, I got it from, you know, this report that I found online. Uh, and I knew that I wanted to create this sort of podium style visual somewhere in this report because I wanted the online journal to be able to see which one is the best, for example. I also took inspiration from this report, which is an example of a report that I got it from the, the data sets from Power BI uh, community site, actually. And it's, it's really good in terms of creating a visual, but at the same time, kind of making it infographic style, you know, you're able to make dynamic selections while not losing the, the main plot of it. So I wanted to use and mix these elements together. 
which here is the progression of the actual design of the report. So um, at the beginning, I was thinking to have these different elements and then it just got changed as I went through different iterations. So this was the second iteration of the design. So I wanted to have, um, you know, it's looking a lot more like what I have now, but I decided to remove certain things like, for example, the ranking by industry at the bottom because I thought that was a bit too busy instead of being impactful. Um, and then in the end, I came up with this kind of setup where you would have the main impactful visual in the middle, which I was thinking at the beginning to be a kind of clustered scatter plots, which in, in the end it didn't work out. But this is essentially how I go through the design process. So I iterate through the design, see what works, and then I make changes as I go along. And that's essentially how I came up with this final result here that you can see. Now there are lots of things going on in this report, so I'm not going to bore you with the details. We're only going to focus on the bits that I think are quite interesting or quite niche if you work in Power BI and you might not know how to build something like this. So the first thing that you might notice is this visual, which is a custom visual available from the app source. You can get it uh, for free and you can use it for free. At the beginning, I wanted to use Deneb or Charticulator to kind of create something impactful here, but uh, my skills unfortunately don't aren't that good yet. So I was looking for some alternatives on how I can use a kind of impactful visual and not just use a simple bar chart. I mean, in essence, this is essentially just a bar chart, but I wanted to present it in a way that is kind of more eye catching. You'll notice a lot of dynamic elements here. Like for example, you'll notice that as I make changes or do selections or filters, a lot of the summaries change like the subtitles, for example, or even the summaries at the bottom. And this is powered by a mixture of things. So the first thing is by using these smart narratives. Now it's an AI powered feature that allows you to kind of create summaries based on the data that you give it. And you don't really need to write so much, but what it's done for me is it's created the analysis for me. And I simply just changed up the words of the sort of non static summaries and made it work for me. If you want to know more about how smart narratives work, I did cover it in a video a long time ago, and it's a really cool feature. The other thing is obviously to create the different measures for these summaries, which is what I've done here under the visuals panel. So if you wanted to, so for example, the statements here, 22% lower than, for example, so I would create those different uh, scenarios and link it back into a text box, which allows me to, you know, customize the different statements that we have in these summaries so that they still sound like a natural language, like someone is just writing it for you, except that it's not, that it's dynamic. Another niche feature that you probably have noticed is the use of this um, page tooltip. Now, page tooltip by itself is not a difficult feature to implement. But the thing is, if you don't have a visual, you cannot just add a page tooltip anywhere. So the trick of using the page tooltip in areas like this is by creating essentially a hidden visual. So in this case, as you can see here, is a hidden card visual. And what we've done is we've created a blank card visual there. And within that card visual, we just made sure that um, the tooltip is assigned to the right page tooltip that we wanted. And this is how you're able to add page tooltip whenever you want or wherever you want within your page. And finally, I think an interesting one to know is the filters and slicers here, because we have slicers here at the top in the middle, as well as a slicer here on the right. And essentially, I wanted to make sure that for each section of the reports, the slicers only work for that section and doesn't affect anything else. And for this one, I just had to make sure that within, so if I select this, uh, this visual, for example, that on any other part of the reports, this visual doesn't affect it, it only affects the ones that are within its own section. And that's really it for this report. If you want to play around with the interactive version of this report, I did publish it to the web as a public report. So I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can kind of play around with it. What did you think? Did you like it? Do you have any suggestions or maybe things I could have improved? Let me know in the comment section box below. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.